you know, maybe it's a little bit mean to say one trick pony, but um, it seems like we're gonna we're gonna be um, subjected to another pigeon dunk release from the legend that is Jeff Staple. Um, we've seen it kind of leaked a few times and spoken about on websites, and people have been speaking about this whole thing over coming up again. And I guess for there is a there is a small contingent, there is a small group of people out there. There is a small diehard group of sneakerheads out there who who will buy just about anything and everything out there, right? And who just want to be part of all the kind of nonsense and all the kind of stuff that happens during sneaker release day. For them, it's just something that kind of galvanizes them and makes them feel like they're alive and whatever, right? But there is also a group of people out there like me, I would assume, who just don't want to do anything to do with that, want to see innovative products, want to see fresh products, want to see stuff made well, and want to see also companies taking a responsibility actively and ensuring the safety of their customers, right? We've had stories come out of people being shot, people have been stabbed and stuff at releases and for this, for some reason or like her like or not all the blame gets put on top of the stores that are issued these shoes and whatever it may be and people kind of lord at them and say they should be keeping their customer safety but in general it's at the responsibility of the brands to make sure the shoes are produced enough in order to make sure everyone's if it fills demand then no nonsense has to occur on release day but again you know here we are many years on they haven't really um, got down they haven't really sorted out how to release shoes really in a, in a really you know exact way that kind of works for most people the sneakers app is whatever right it's a bit hit and miss for the most part um the whole kind of reserving something and having to pay for it and not having to your credit card details on on file is not something that everyone's everyone's comfortable with sharing stuff on social media i've made my position clear on that i fucking hate it i think it's fucking stupid right so they haven't even sorted all that stuff out yet but they still want to push these kind of you know boom um, crazy um bombastic releases right in the hope that they're going to garner loads of coverage over media but then they're going to take no responsibility if some fucking nonsense happens right it gets crazy and i'm saying this uh, with the reality that the new york based or the kind of american based sneakerhead the one that wants to buy everything and anything and will do just about anything and everything to buy whatever is limited for the flip or whatever it is or just for the clout that person, right, needs to be, um, you need to pay attention to that, cus to, to that customer. You can't drum up hype over a shoe that might not release in a lot of places, release it limitedly, and then take no responsibility that customer is being put into danger. And now we're seeing that the Pigeon Dunk, which is, a you know, one of the kind of shoes that represents, in my opinion, the demise of the overall sneakerhead community, you know, because it kind of preyed on just hype for hype's sake. It wasn't necessarily a shoe that people really liked or thought that was a cool, I looked amazing just because it sold for crazy amounts because, you know, it garnered loads of attention on New York tabloids and newspapers, whatever it may be, that people want to kind of be part of the story and of course jeff staples sits there as a kind of orchestrator of this whole mess um and being somebody who kind of you know i've kind of grown to understand over the years listen to the podcast but still someone that kind of just really baffles my mind overall you know he's had this one trick that he's been kind of consistently playing upon over and over and over again he might have other work that we are not aware of but for the most part anything that we know of that kind of gets pushed out there a lot by him is his kind of close industry friendships and the fact that he had this one shoe that he released ages ago that he's now going to flip again put in another colorway in the hope that it's going to kind of get everyone's attention and you know blow up the internet once again and again like i said it's just not safe it's just not safe on the streets for people like this i'm not sure if this is the right way to go about things but whatever um there's a video out at the moment kind of speaking about what he wants to do that I kind of want to speak on and let some commentary let's hear what he has to say and let's see if maybe maybe i've read it all wrong and maybe he's going to do it in a good ethical way people are going to be able to get their shoes no one's going to get severely injured i'm hoping not cross cross our t's dot our eyes on that malarkey but here's the video let me get it up here blah 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 blah, blah. where is it boom there we go da, 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 da. get it up here on the screen Ooh, shit. So, you know, the last time you guys came to shoot to come up, it was in our old office. And our old office was really dope. Everyone sort of shared like a big loft space, uh, except me, I had my own office. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my team, like, you know, we were growing. So there was sort of like a request to be like, let's upgrade the office and just to get you some sort of perspective on time. We dropped the Black Pigeon in November of 2017. 
and then we moved offices just a month later. Started unpacking all the stuff, and I started to show some of the prototype samples that were rejected in the process of making the Black Pigeon. Like, blowing up my stories, blowing up my IG, and kids were just, like, fiending. That's essentially what he lives for, right? Just loads of kids just fiending over his Instagram stream. He's essentially, you know what he is? He's essentially at the sneakerhead version of uh, Ben Baller, really, isn't it? He's just like this, this kind of like man child that kind of like preys on young kids in order to kind of validate him. But the moment they say anything against him, he kind of switches. Well, to be fair, I've not really seen um, Jeff Staple kind of get mad on, on, on social media for the most part. But again, it's just like a, it's such a nonsense release, right? So the, the, the original pigeon came out. And then a black pigeon came out, and now we get another black pigeon. For what reason? To commemorate what? And then when you see the bottom of the shoe, they've got it's got like an icy soul shoe. I think it's, a, it's an icy soul, see through, whatever it may be, however you describe it. And then inside the soul are newspaper clippings of all the news of all the kind of front page headlines that the original pigeon kind of garnered um, for that release. I'm assuming it's the original one. It might be the the black pigeon. I'm not too sure, but come on. Like, you know what you're doing. You're obviously doing it in the hope that it's going to create another bit of viral marketing for you. And I'm sure he's going to use this bit of viral marketing to then lend himself, you know, some more um, content marketing gigs for the next kind of year or five years or whatever content it needs to be. But I assume, you know, for ions and ions to come. But it's just like, come on, man. There's got, he has to be more he has to offer. This guy's been around from the very um onset in the very beginning he's friends with some of the most influential people in the industry but it seems like he doesn't seem to have any sort of fresh new ideas to kind of push out there and it should be a there should be a moment again not me maybe i'm not person to speak about it because you know maybe the money you get given the opportunity is too good to turn down but i would assume that once you've done something that great as a pigeon dunk right especially during that era of like silver box sbs and all that sort of malarkey i would assume it'd be quite a good opportunity to like you know take stock of your achievements and maybe t put some distance behind it and also want to show people what you can do like show them a new trick sort of what i've said about um the joe lorenzo and fog collaboration right the fear of god collaboration it's not something again that i would that i was overly anticipating you know something that I'd maybe wear in general right but i really appreciate the effort that he went to instead of just getting an air force one instead of getting a jordan one and just changing the color which he could have easily done it could have easily fitted into everything that he does already right he could have easily gone over to adas and done a and done like a y3 model whatever he may want to do anything he wore in the past we've seen him wear we thought it looked cool but instead of doing that with nike collaboration he decided to kind of take a new build a new model from the ground up take a chance right and it could have completely fell flat people could have thought it looked fucking shit but luckily, it kind of it kind of went off, and then you double it with this with the skyline as well as a good little kind of complement to the shoe. If you don't want something too crazy, you've got the skyline to kind of rib on. So I appreciate the fact that he took a bit of a risk. But again, this you're making a black pigeon dunk, right? Something that he's quote unquote saying he designed. Like back in the day when people used to say they designed Nike IDs, you'd get laughed at the shop, right? Like, ah, oh, here's the shoe I designed on Nike ID. What you moved around some colors. So imagine nowadays when people are making new models of shoes, right? They're having collaborations and they're not happy with like just having a color in a shoe, right? They're, they're taking stuff from the archive and kind of pulling it back into the kind of present day. Like Harry Preston with his sunglasses and shit. Maybe something you're not liking, but again, it, it takes a bit of, you know, it takes a bit of ingenuity, in, ingenuity, a little bit of innovation, a little bit of creativity spark to kind of be like, you know what? Let's not go that way. Let's go this way. But again, what we're seeing here is, again, this guy that's like 40 plus wanting to appeal to just children, right? Wanting to them to queue outside of a store for 18 hours for him to sign. Like, come on, man. This is nonsense. But hey, what do I know? Let's just play the video and continue. Had books, albums, comic books, toys, really trying to like give like a history lesson. You know what I mean? And when I was showing... What's the, the history lesson? What history lesson can you give from taking pictures of your collection that you have in storage and uploading Instagram stories? Unless you're writing some good, interesting copy next to it. What, what is history lesson? Oh, look, you know, that, you know that Bear Brick that came out in 2002? I got it. Still have it. You know that shoe that came out in 2016? I got it. Still have it. The kids know all the hype shit. So it's the, the whole education library is, full of, is on StockX. You can just look at everything that's like, oh... Why is that going for so much money? It came out in 2002. Okay, cool. Add it to my list. You know what I mean? That's education you need. You don't need to go on someone's story and see them. You know, if it, if anything, that's just him waxing his own ego. Oh, like, give me a pat on the back, guys. Look, I've got all these shoes in storage. Like, ugh. Samples, we came across this one. I had never designed a shoe that looked like this. Designed. So we just sort of took whatever designed. leathers they had. A dunk low SB. Together just to send me to be like, all right. this is sort of what you're talking about. Obviously, you know, it's not what I'm talking about. But I remember I just, you know, held that, took that picture. 
And then I said like rejected sample, a panda and then a pigeon emoji and then a question mark. Within an hour, that post ended up on all the blogs. And <sighs> it kind of went viral really fast. I get a call from Nike. Just, you know, every picture that he's smiling in is when he's viral and when he's alone in his own big office. Right, and kids are foaming at the mouth. Every again, the illustration. Don't get me wrong; it's not having to do with him. But everything that brings him joy is being viral, having kids queue up around the shop of his shoe. Right, and that's that's what that's what gives him joy. Right, and I'm covering a box of shoes of stuff that I bought when I was. Bro, you've been around for ages, man. You've had a full time job, or you've had a proper job working in industry for a long time. You've made money. You've been able to. You've had contacts. You've been able to buy the stuff that you desired. Like it's no surprise you have stuff. It's no achievement. No one's looking at that and being amazed that oh wow, just staple dude has been involved in the industry for twenty plus years. Has stuff that came out twenty plus years ago. Ah, uh, it happens. Jamie, you know I mean? like what the fuck? And they're like, dude, everyone at Beaverton's in an uproar over this post that you did. I was like, oh shit, are they mad? And they're like, no, 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 they're stoked on it. You should take it down now. I'm like, why should I take it down? And they're like, because we should do something with the shoe. And I so imagine rejected samples that Jeff Staple made for the second black for the second black pigeon dunk. He posted on his Instagram story. Nike employees see it, they freak out because again, people's memories are so imagine if people that make the shoe forgot that they made the shoe a year ago with a, a guy that rejected or whatever time they, they they rejected the sample, and now they're thinking, oh, actually, nice thing you reminded us. Like, come on, guys. Like, and I'm assuming it's tying in with the whole like dunk, dunk resurgence that Virgil's doing, re, re wearing loads of dunks and stuff. But imagine, no one in this, no one in that kind of building in Beaverton had an idea of like maybe pulling out the shoe and approaching Jeff Staple first. It was him posting stuff on Instagram stories that kind of sparked the idea, which kind of is a bit, what, bit bewildering, isn't it? Considering now, maybe not because you know they've got uh, thousands of releases of shoes they're probably doing every quarter at the least, right? So they're probably not, you know, overly concentrating on something that they rejected time ago, but still, come on. You don't know, like? And I was like, oh, okay, I'll take it down. <laughs> so took down the post, which made people be like, oh, Jeff just took down the post. Again, hype, 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 hype. Put down the post. Oh, and this then guy, this and adult hype is just like disgusting, isn't it? Could take so happy, like with reality, really no? Interesting with it. When I really felt like this. Just like a, a whole shoe. office full of toys and expensive trainers and just doing the same thing again and again every year, like reselling hype and toys, hype and toys, hype and toys to kids. Like, oh God, Dude, when like this bubble bursts, I'll be so happy. The way there and it just needed just a go back to the essence of it, man. This is this is, is, is this fun but for anyone? Is this fun? Really? To China. You're getting toyed around with these shoes? Like, I made, I made this amazing dunk shoe. Amazing, yeah. Well, not really amazing. I just took the dunk that I made last year and I just flipped the colors again and then now it represents China and... Uh, and the you is that what okay cool uh, me wanting to sort of respect where i come from and then the panda being like the the sort of like unofficial mascot of china the pigeon being the unofficial mascot of new york city you know the panda owning the jungle the pigeon owning like the urban jungle it just made sense for the, these two animals that should never come together that come together that's reverse if ever there was reverse rationalization there good. is I mean, and still there. that kid in sixth grade who is still like carefully lacing up shoes and dreaming of the day i get to go to beaverton you know see what it's like in the wizard of oz so to be able to still have that sort of like crazy feeling inside my soul when i see a pair of shoes it's still uh unbelievable but when you see a dunk that you already made time ago and i go just come on man this isn't a ah, jesus christ anyway I can't be too I get but yeah anyway I, put my logo. I think that's probably enough i don't want to watch too much more of this video um i'm not sure when it's going to come out the shoe's coming out soon i guess if you, if you care about that sort of stuff then probably keep your eye out eye, eye out for it for me could give a fucking scooby-doo like i said if if they were made you know, with the intention of making sure sneakerheads actually buy them and not kind of causing virality and making sure there's riots on the streets and people get in you know, the fights and stuff and videos go up on fucking Worldstar and, you know, marketing teams, you know, on the low can kind of like celebrate that. Wow, look at this guerrilla marketing thing we've done with no, with no ad spend or blah, blah, blah. Fuck off. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not involved in it. But again, I wish him all the best. I hope the shoe blows up and it does as well as it needs to be done and you can call it parlay this other things. But I want to see more of new stuff. Give us something interesting. Give us something fresh, man. Don't always come back with the same old stuff if rehashing it. Maybe there's other stuff he's done that I've not been aware of, but the things that always garner attention on in Jeff Staples' realm is always a pigeon, 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 pigeon. I went to the store, Reed Space, back in the day. It was a fucking interesting store to go into, right? Core, cool, interesting space. Like, great things in there. Like, build from that, I don't know, whatever. I'm not one to tell anyone what to do in their, their career. Who am I to say that? But come on, man. Offer something more than just rehashing or fucking SB dunks like, and getting a boner over it. Like, come on, really? God damn it.